Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host and meteorologist, D.T., the commander of chaos, the colonel of confusion, the captain of catastrophe. It's Sunday night. Let's talk about the weather and what's going to happen. Well, uh, topics here tonight, we'll talk about the eastern U.S. drought. Obviously, the remains of Nate have helped the drought situation in some areas significantly, but along the east coast, it really hasn't. We'll talk about the warm pattern over the central and eastern U.S. and why it's likely to last to through at least November 1st. We'll talk about Siberian snow cover update and also some updates on La Nina as well. So let's get right to it. All right, here's the uh, percentage of normal here of the last 30 days. Now, uh, this is since September 8th, so this is a little deceptive because all that uh, purple stuff here, uh, which represents, you know, significant rains in all this area here, are relatively recent since October 1st so that's a little deceptive here so uh, you know it's not quite quite that wet but it is accurate in this area as you can see the eastern US drought here it's, it's quite uh, quite significant in fact if we take a look since September 1st you can see that the uh, drought conditions relative for the entire month of September were quite uh, prominent here and all the wetness was way back over the western plains so it's still quite wet for everybody essentially the central and eastern portions of the country. So September was a very dry month indeed. If we look at the east coast here, uh, since September 1st, the entire month, you can see that the actual rainfall, let me uh, call it my mark here so you can see it. See that red dot there, half inch, many areas, one to two inches or rain for the total month or less. Uh, quite dry, especially in places like uh, Virginia and West Virginia and Ohio. Not, too, not nearly as dry over uh, the Carolinas. Uh, and if you look at again, this is the percentage relative to normal for the month of September. You can see large areas of uh, five to uh, anywhere to 50 percent of normal rainfall. Again, large portions of Virginia, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Maryland, Delaware, Ohio, Western New York State, and so on and so forth. Now, this obviously was the uh, radar from this afternoon. You can see Nate there at the low pressure area of northern uh, Alabama, the big rain shield in the Tennessee and southern portions of the Ohio Valley. I posted this earlier on the Facebook page. And this also, the to total rainfall here by Tuesday, 8 p.m., notice again large dry slots in this area here where the rain you know, goes up the Appalachians. Shenandoah Valley gets it in West Virginia, Kentucky, Tennessee, all of Ohio, good rains, but large dry areas here and here. So, But the good news is that, um, again, this is supported by the European model uh, from Sunday to Monday, but there is a second rain event which is showing up a little bit here. We can see this on... Uh, early Wednesday morning to most of the day on Wednesday you can see moderate rain showers over much of Virginia and the areas that missed some of the rain so we'll see if that holds together or not. Now longer term what's going on with the pattern? Well it's pretty obvious what, what, what the pattern is. Here's our ridge and then you know this is actually a tropical system that may be another one in the Bahamas here. We'll see, you know uh, that's showing up in many of the models as well. Uh, we'll see if that develops and certainly with the ridge to the north that's a possibility but here's our mean trough Okay, very good early winter ski conditions, high elevations, a lot of snow coming in for the Rockies here over the next five days. And the mean trough is here and the ridge is this way. So this is your, your classic uh, negative uh, P and A pattern, as you can see here. And the Arctic Oscillation is nowhere to be found. So it's that's going to continue. And if we look at 240 hours now, this also looks like more of the same. Monster trough, um, as you can see here, on the uh, west coast. And again, a bit of a ridge here as well. But most important to look at here is this thing. Now, this is the polar vortex, our old friend, the polar vortex. So clearly, the models show it developing. Now, normally, the, having the polar vortex in this part of the country is the kiss of death for the East Coast for, for if you like, winter or cold temperatures. And it is. There's no two ways about it. The huge polar vortex over northwest Canada and Alaska means the mean trough is on the West Coast, which means your ridge is in the east. And there's no way of getting the cold air into the U.S. Now, this gets very cold up in here. But again, with the flow doing this, there's no way to get the cold south. So now that looks like really bad news, but maybe not. Because what happens is, don't forget, folks, here, this area is the ice box. This is where our cold weather comes from. So in some ways, having this happen in October and building the cold air up in here is not bad. Because later on in the winter, it'll get a chance to come south as a big, massive uh, push of cold air. So while it's bad in terms of having a cold October, having a cold October doesn't do anything. In fact, you can make the argument having a cold October is a waste of cold air. 
because what happens is you'll get 45 degrees you go man if this was december this would be snow and it's you know it's dust so anyway having the cold air build up in that part of canada in alaska is not necessarily a bad thing now that it's not doesn't mean that it is going to come southward it, i'm saying that if the pattern changes if and the, that would allow a large buildup of cold air to come southward. So there is, you know, and I've seen this many winters where you've had the vortex sit up over Alaska, northwest Canada, and it looks like a really crappy uh, overall pattern. And then the polar vortex decides to come out of western Canada and go, you know, uh, into something, someplace over here. And then you have a different pattern. So we'll see if that happens. All right. If we look at a rainfall, not much than in the 6 to 10 day, a little bit of rain in the Midwest here. Uh, nothing over the uh, mid-Atlantic or, or the dry areas. And if we look at 330 hours, again, what do we see? Well, here's our friend, the polar vortex, very noticeable. There's our mean trough right here, okay? And here's our ridge. You can see it there. The flow is going like this. Now, this actually produced a little more rain here for the Midwest areas, again. Uh, but having this area getting cold and built up of cold air is not necessarily a bad thing in October. So I just want to point that out to you. And there is your rain on the Midwest with the ensemble showing that clearly. Now, if we look at the 16 to 20 day, this is the rollover model. It assumes the pattern in the 11 to 15 day is going to be correct. And it finds the top 10 analogs to the 11 to 15 day pattern. And it rolls it over into the 16 to 20 day. And what does that show us? Now, this is an interesting forecast tool. It's not great all the time, but it's not horrible either. You can see uh, very warm temperatures here, but the whole country is warm relative to normal for mid and late October, as you can see. And if we go to precipitation, it's dry over the uh, Mississippi Valley in Texas, getting some rain on the East Coast here, so maybe that's a good sign. Now, longer term, the European weeklies, this is from last Thursday, you can see that there is trying to develop some sort of ridge. Notice the, 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 uh, the uh, polar vortex here. It actually is going back a little bit in this direction, as you can see. So that may be a start. And we're getting another little vortex forming up here. Like a little bit of a ridge forming here and some troughiness here. And uh, that's not a huge, great pattern. I mean, it's nothing spectacular. It's not a lot of cold air, but at least it's not warm. And we can see that continuing. This is November 16th. Bit of a ridge on the West Coast, a bit of a trough in the East. Nothing to write home the mom about, but, uh, you know, it's better than record warm temperatures. Now, the CFS is not really showing this yet. It may show it later on. We are seeing some signs of a polar vortex form, again, here a little bit, and uh, a little bit of a ridge on the West Coast, but still a strong Pacific jet. So the CFS is not anything that you write home the mom about. And you can see the temperatures are still quite warm. Not as warm as earlier in October, in late October, over the eastern U.S., but still relatively warm. Now, let's talk about the snow cover here in Siberia or Siberia, depending on your point of view. And you can see the red line here. This is, um, uh, again, this is Siberia. Uh, the green line is last winter. So let's call it the marker here. This is last winter. And this is the current one. You can see it's actually running a little above normal, a, a little above last year's, which was a pretty good year. So we'll see if that actually holds. Now, if we take a look at the, uh, this is nor nor Northern Hemisphere. The snow covers about, eh, like that. Uh, very close to last year's. Now, if we take a look at the, how the Siberian snow cover is advancing, remember the key factor here is 60 degrees north latitude, which runs right about through here. So, well, actually, let me clear that out. I got the, I, I did not quite do that right. The 60 degree north latitude line runs like this. So you want to see the advance of the snow cover south of that line. Now, this is the current one or, or expected to be the, the snow cover by tomorrow morning. Uh, this is from the GFS model, so we can use that. And then we see what happens here. Now, this is the pattern in, in Eurasia right now. And you're getting this enormous ridge you can see here, which is dropping these big monster lows in Kazakhstan, which are moving this way and spreading the snow and keeping the temperatures quite cold in this whole area. So you have the cold air coming southward and these big storms bringing in the snow. So the pattern looks pretty good for the next 10 days or so. Now, this is the uh, European Ensemble at uh, 216 hours out. You can see this big trough here over Siberia, bringing more snow and cold, and the ridge continues to hold there. Uh, let's look at the actual uh, maps. Right now in, in Siberia, we have a big upper low here. You can see this, a big low here. Now, this feature is going to move out. Big trough, it's quite cold, as you can see. And then as we go further out in time, now this is 72 hours. Uh, that low, which we saw is now uh, moving here out to Kamchatka, and here's central low coming out of that big ridge. You remember that 
which we saw here, it comes another big low dropping down into Siberia, and then it's going to turn due east this way. And sure enough, that's exactly what happens. And that spreads more snow. This is the European Ensemble at day 7, 168 hours out. And there's another big system here coming, to, coming southward. And there's our system we just talked about over here. So overall, it's a pretty, you know, decent looking pattern for Siberia. And you can see the snow coverage has explode over the next uh, seven days from the GFS model. And let me draw my line in again so you can see it right along like this. And you can see the snow cover expands significantly here. So, you know, it's, it's got, like I said, uh, I've seen better early October snow, but this isn't bad. This is pretty good. And if we look at the uh, European weeklies, 408 hours which is way out there, you know, October 22nd, uh, you can see that the ridge, I mean, we talked about this enormous ridge is still there. So it's still dropping cold into Siberia and wet low pressure areas here, which are tracking across and bringing snow. So overall, it looks like a pretty favorable pattern. Finally, let's look at La Nina a little bit here. This is from the NMA. Uh, you can see from the October runs, most of the models here, this is, let me go up my uh, marker here, so this, this is uh, a ascent, essentially, I really screwed that up. Let me clear that out here and do it again. We're looking to find the, the classifications of weak to uh, moderate. So around one degree here is around where the moderate begins. Um, and you can see that only really the CFS model here is the one that gets it close to January, February. The other models keep it pretty weak. So I do believe it is going to be a weak La Nina. And uh, I think the data clearly shows that. We'll see if any of the models trend. I'll see that I'll look at the new European uh, ENSO models tomorrow, and I'll probably post them on my Twitter or the Facebook account. But I believe the European Ensemble mean will also show a weak La Nina continuing for most of the winter. And that has significant implications. Weak La Ninas give you snow chances in the east. They prevent the pattern from being overwhelmed with too much warm air Pacific jet. So weak La Ninas keep you in the ballgame. They're not great, but they're not a disaster either. This is meteorologist DT from weatherist.com. I'll talk to you soon.